I was uh, received uh, along with my family at the church in uh, February of 1998. Um, my first encounters with orthodoxy uh, were when I was in college in the uh, early and mid 1970s. Uh, I was uh, a, a classics major reading Greek and Latin and and was an active Christian, had been involved in a lot of uh, Protestant Christian uh, activities, sort of, in those days, Jesus freak sort of things. <laughs> and, uh, but I was majoring in Latin and Greek and began reading the, the, the fathers in Greek, uh, particularly the Cappadocians, and uh, was interested in that. And a friend of mine gave me uh, a copy of Vladimir Lossky's Mystical Theology of the Eastern Church, which of all books to read first about orthodoxy is probably not the one. And I, I, I dare say I didn't understand most of what I read, but what I did understand uh, certainly sowed a, a very uh, deep seed in my heart and, and answered questions that uh, were uh, later to be very important questions for me. Uh, from college, I, uh, was, uh, I was an Anglican the time in college, I went, from college I went directly to uh, an Episcopal seminary uh, in the Chicago area. I was there for three years. I uh, graduated, was ordained, and began serving uh, in uh, Episcopal parishes in South Carolina. Um, but uh, when I was in college, I mean, when I was in seminary, uh, my dogmatics professor uh, had actually done his doctorate at Harvard under Father Georges Florovsky. Uh, and so he was always uh, acknowledging my interest in questions about orthodoxy and giving me things to read. Um, I was hacking my way through uh, Gregory Palamas in French. Uh, since he didn't exist in any English translation, we had uh, the triads and I was reading some in that. And, and um, in fact, I really had to sort of cram for my finals and actually read some Anglican theology before I graduated. Uh, it wasn't nearly as interesting. Um, but I think one of the burning questions for me, uh, just, in, I don't know if I always stated it that way, but uh, on a very existential level was the question of, can you actually know God? You know, I mean, is God someone who we can know, or is God only to be approached through various forms of mediation, whether scripture or theology or, or whatever? And um, much of what I was running to in uh, running across in Western theology and reading it seriously um, was very much of a mediated sort. In fact, I had a, a professor of, of philosophical theology who thought that it was absurd to have any notion of an unmediated knowledge of God. And though I would try to write papers on that, drawing from Palamite sources and things, it was just treated as, as nonsense. But, you know, that's a real... It's a real question. I mean, do I actually know God or not? Or am I just talking and offering my opinions? And so I kept reading that. And though I served um, in parishes and would read what I could and did what I was supposed to do, um, I had visited in some Orthodox churches when I was in college. Uh, but at the time, in the 70s, uh, in the South, really, uh, I, I visited in, in the Greek church, which was all Greek language. And, and though I could follow it reading, um, it just didn't seem like something that was an option, nor was I being encouraged by anyone to pursue that option. And so I, I tended to think, well, I'll just try to do my best as an Anglican. Um, but the question remained. After about nine years or so uh, as a priest in the uh, Anglican church, I decided to, uh, maybe a little longer than that, I decided to go back uh, to graduate school and went to Duke uh, to work on a doctorate in theology. Uh, which I wound up turning into a, an MA, uh, which is another long story by itself. Uh, but there I was working under um, Gregory Wainwright, who was a, a Methodist theologian, but also him, he himself had done his doctorate under Nicholas Nisiotis and was uh, is very well thought of by many Orthodox theologians. In fact, has been a commencement speaker uh, at St. Vladimir's, um, primary use, primarily using uh, liturgical sources uh, for the foundation of a systematic theology. And he encouraged me and allowed me to just read freely in orthodox sources, which I just buried myself in uh, with much the same burning question in my heart, although that really expanded out. Uh, the thesis I did at Duke 
was on the uh, was on the icon as theology, in which I looked at the used sort of the Seventh Council and its theology and the ancillary writings around that uh, to do something of a systematic. Though I know that's not very orthodox, but that's was what I was doing. Uh, making that part of the story short, by the time I had finished my work at Duke, uh, all of the answers to the questions I had were coming up orthodox. And so uh, life was getting to be less and less intellectual in which I was uh, asking less questions that needed to have a theological solution and the questions were becoming far more existential as in, well, what should I do about it? And um, of course I was married at Duke. I had three children, we moved to Tennessee. We had a fourth child and I was uh, then serving as rector of a fairly large church. And, and uh, there's a lot of questions about, you know, how do you leave a large church with a decent income and a wife, would you have a wife and four children uh, to become Orthodox, particularly if you're thinking about becoming Orthodox in the Orthodox Church in America, where in the South, there's uh, a, a plethora of storefront churches and priests and trailers. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult life. And um, so that really sort of began the, the next stage of our journey. I, I met Archbishop Dimitri of Dallas. Uh, we formed a, a good relationship. I began talking with him about my interests. Um, and in great orthodox form, we had those conversations and almost nothing happened other than the fact that every moment of vacation I could get over the next number of years was spent visiting orthodox churches um, we began to keep an Orthodox home. We learned how to keep the fast. We began to pray as Orthodox um, with Orthodox prayers and icons. Um, and um, things, and I was, it, 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 towards the end of that, last several years, I was looking for a job. Of course, that becomes a difficulty too in your resume, all you have on your resume, because all you've ever done for a living is be a priest. Nobody wants to look at your resume. Uh, they think there must be something wrong with you, and the things that are wrong with priests are oftentimes not very good things. Um, and uh, frankly, just miraculously, uh, I was offered a job uh, as a hospice chaplain uh, with a local, uh, uh, through a local hospital system, and uh, accepted the job, renounced my orders as an Anglican, and um, literally, at the timing of things, uh, and this was all uh, according to the Archbishop's wish. Uh, I preached my last sermon and said my last Mass on February 8 of 1998. On February 15, a week later, my family and I were received into the church we chrismated, uh, and I was immediately named as a lay pastor for a beginning mission in the Knoxville area and started doing... Um, late vocations program and studying and then um, was ordained deacon in November of that year and March of the next year was ordained at the priesthood. Uh, all of that is to say that while I was serving as a hospice chaplain and taking care of dying people throughout East Tennessee, I had an orthodox learning curve that was as steep as you could possibly imagine. Um, the day I was ordained deacon, my prayer was, oh God, I hope there's not a dumber deacon in orthodoxy because I, I'm as dumb as you can get. I, I just, my sense of what I didn't know, um, I think all of that was God's plan um, to bring me to a place of not knowing, which is a very good place to be um, in doing orthodox life and theology. I felt the same as a priest, and, and though I had responsibilities in a parish, um, a mission, um, I had a very good group of people who've been very patient with me and We've done this now together for 12 years. Uh, we have a congregation of uh, probably about 150 or more of different nationalities, maybe 80% convert. Um, and uh, we, it took us a while. So in some ways my story was, was a 20 year story from just reading Bosky to becoming Orthodox. Uh, but it was, um, in hindsight, it was God's hand and uh, the greatest thing and the greatest blessing that's, that's taken place in my life.